logical reasons to act now. Remember, people don't buy products, they buy emotions. Emotional states, you guys are learning, excellent. So they justify with the logical reasons. So you gotta have both of those, and you need to have those when. Are you gonna go into the interaction and then dream up the emotional reasons and the logical reasons? No, you need to really think this through. And this is a roadmap. So all of you are influencers in this room. Whether you're a journalist writing, you know, you're, you're Julie Borowski growing a social media following, you're, you know, one of the representatives seeking re-election, right? You are an influencer of some sort, and I promise you, no matter what way you're trying to influence, these principles apply. So this is your roadmap. Whoever you're trying to reach, if you've got answers to these, and if you've thoroughly prepared, you go, you know, I know what the likely objections are going to be. And I'm going to write out, how am I, how am I going to address each of these when they come up? Because they're going to come up. Wouldn't you be better prepared if you went to a situation and you already wrote down for yourself, oh, yeah, I know how I'm going to address this. Of course you're going to be better prepared. Don't lock yourself in a box, however. And that's another key principle of becoming an excellent influencer is flexibility. Who, who is going to get the clothes in an influence situation? The person with the most flexibility. Remember how I gave that age-old example of somebody says, oh, let me think about it. The inflexible thing to do is to say, okay, great, talk to you later. You've had no flexibility. You've given up. And in fact, one thing I want you guys to understand is, in any situation of influence, a close is made. The only question is, did you close it, or did they close you on the fact that they, they can't do what you're asking them to do? I mean, think about that for a minute. Because a lot of people are thinking, oh, well, I really informed them. Well, you didn't do any, you didn't provide value. If you didn't get them over that action threshold, then you didn't penetrate the transaction and create the relationship. That's another thing if you guys really think about, you're focused so much on this single moment and this you know, single threshold, but instead think about the future you could have with, with this person, the relationship that you could have. If you go out recruiting for your YAL chapter and you ask yourself, I wonder how many times I'm going to get turned down today. Are you going to get diff different results than somebody who goes out and says, I wonder how many lasting friendships I can make today. You're going to get a completely different set of answers. And in fact, that brings us to one of the core, uh, the core tactics we'll explore here in a minute, which is the power of questions. But first I want to share with you emotional state awareness. You guys want to understand you know, how the top performing influencers do this? Right? I've researched the field researched the interviews, looked at what common principles, what commonalities apply to people in sales industries, top CEOs, people who are leading teams, people who are getting people to take action. I'll tell you that these four things are some of the things in their arsenal. One of them of which, one of the most important is the ability to take an assessment of your emotional state, control it, and then by extension, control someone else's emotional state. So let me back up because that's a lot and we're going to dig into this. But do you guys remember at the beginning of the first training, I said, I can get up here and speak, but that's only half of it, right? I need you here with me. Yep. And I asked you, you know, pay attention to your posture, pay attention to your focus. In fact, I recommend you do it right now because you just put a bunch of food in your stomach. Guess what's <laughs> happening to your body right now? Physiology is changing. Your focus is going down. Oh. Right? It's nap time for some of you guys, feeling like it. It is not always easy to maintain a consistently high level of energy, but it is always worth it. Some people ask me that all the time, Ty, how, what are you doing? You're constantly on the go, like go, 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 go. Yeah, I don't feel like it all the time, but guess what? I'm going to get a very different set of results if I've got a high level of energy. And this is a lesson I learned years ago when I was a chapter president. When I was chapter president organizing a recruitment table, my volunteers would come up with a dropped face. I'd say, go home. We don't need that here. Put a smile on, get your energy up, and get ready to create some friendships or else there's no space for you here. And I wasn't being a jerk, but I was just saying, look, you're the face of our organization. People are going to have their first reaction of what we are, what we do, and how we do it based off of how you're presenting yourself. And so ask yourself, how are you showing up right now? How are you, and I don't mean right now in this moment, although that's part of it, but I mean, how are you showing up in your world of influence? Are you showing up with a full tank? Or are you going on fumes? Emotional